The Dark Knight Rises, the third and final film in Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy. And boy does it not disappoint. I make it no mystery that The Dark Knight is one of my favorite movies of all time. The Dark Knight Rises might actually be better. Batman Begins, it has its problems, it has its really good points. The Dark Knight has its problems and its really good points. The Dark Knight Rises actually kind of merges the bests of both. At 2 hours and 45 minutes, I thought this movie was going to be long and tiring, which, if nothing else, as exciting as The Dark Knight can get, eventually it can be a little bit uh, emotionally grating. I mean, it just kind of wears you out after a while. With The Dark Knight Rises, I never had that. It was paced out enough for me that I could actually get through it very well and very excited. People are making points about how there's not a whole lot about Batman. I mean, you don't see him. But I think that's kind of the point. Christopher Nolan's movies have always been about the character of Bruce Wayne. As such, we really don't need to see much of the Batman. However, what we do see is awesome. We get the Batcave in all its glory. We get the Batcopter in all its glory. We get everything we've been looking for, at least something in some way that we were looking for. Even those people that kind of wanted a sidekick. You kind of get that in this movie. I will dare, I, I won't dare spoil this movie. You guys really need to go see this movie. Everything in this movie works. Christian Bale as Batman worked, and they even kind of, yes, he still got the goofy voice, but it's really toned down more because he doesn't spend a whole lot of time as Batman, and when he does, it's usually it's a very silent or it's an action scene. The characters of Alfred and Lucius are handled very well. I mean, it's Morgan Freeman and Michael Caine. I mean, they're obviously going to be awesome, but it's not really about them. They've kind of gone by the wayside. It's much more focused on Bruce Wayne, like it should. We then have the characters of Bane and Miranda Tate, as well as Selina Kyle. I guess I'll go with Selina Kyle first. She is really, really good. Everyone thought that Anne Hathaway wasn't going to be able to play Catwoman, primarily because everyone's idea of Catwoman is Michelle Pfeiffer. But Anne Hathaway manages to deliver a Catwoman that's very unique and very, very realistic. As is custom for a Christopher Nolan Batman movie. Also, Tangent, the trailer for Man of Steel is awesome. I can't wait to see what Christopher Nolan does with the Superman franchise. But, but, let's get on with Bane. Bane's got some big shoes to fill. After having your the previous main antagonists be uh, Liam Neeson as Raish al Ghul, not Raz, Raish, and then having Heath Ledger as the Joker in probably one of the most powerful and most famous performances in any comic book movie, Tom Hardy had a really big, big shoe to fill. And did he? I really do think so. I mean, yes, the voice did take a little bit of getting used to, but I got acclimated to it fairly quickly. And there were only a few moments where I actually ever went, Huh? What? What did he say? And they were usually because they were like really short phrases. Of course, what I love about this Bane is that he's smart. And he's threatening. Everyone who's never read the comics has this interpretation of Bane as being this really stupid, thuggish sidekick. Maybe because of Batman and Robin. Bum! 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 That's 
not Bane. That was never Bane. Bane was always, always Batman superior. In the comics, he was intellectually and physically superior to Batman in just about every aspect, which is what made him such a frightening villain. He's the only villain who beat Batman so thoroughly that Batman actually had to hang up the cowl for a while. And when your character goes from BAM, BAM, to When Gotham is ashes, you have my permission to die. Bane is, he has got to be one of, I actually do think he is probably the best Batman villain so far. May, maybe the Joker beats him by a little, but only by a little. And that's really only because of the personality of the Joker. Bane can kind of come off as, well, kind of boring. I mean, you're told a backstory, but there's a twist to the backstory that I won't dare reveal. Uh, but when you find it out, it's a really exciting, it's a great, it's a great twist. But I do think it kind of hurts the character of Bane. Anyway, everyone gives their all. I really don't want to... That's the hard part. This movie is so good. I don't want to say anything about it. I want you guys to just go and see this. Go. Go with my blessing. Go see this movie. I went to the midnight premiere. Sorry. No, I didn't go to the midnight premiere. The midnight premiere sold out about a month ago. I wanted to go to the IMAX premiere. It sold out about two months ago. I wanted to go to the 1205, 1210, 1225 showings. And they were all sold out. I ended up going to the 1230 showing. Totally worth it. I actually want to go see this movie again. And I really do think you guys should see this movie in IMAX. If you can, go see this in IMAX. Everyone says that The Dark Knight Rises cannot make the money that The Avengers makes. I really think we should prove them wrong. I think this movie really should get far more attention than it, than it is. And... Given what's happened in Colorado, I really hope that doesn't negatively affect the movie. Having people like Rush Limbaugh, who are under the impression that because a character named Bane happens to share the name of Mitt Romney's company, that it's going to cause people to vote. Romney wasn't even running for governor when Bane was created. Bane is almost 20 years old. I mean, he, he was created when I was born. When I was born, Bane was created. Mitt Romney wasn't even governor of Massachusetts then. Heck, a kangaroo on angel dust couldn't make that logical mental leap. Bullcrap aside, this really is a great movie. And it ends a great franchise in really the only way I think you can end Batman. Suffice to say, I didn't see it coming. All the trailers, they reveal a lot about this movie. Here's the funny thing. None of it. None of the scenes. I, okay, one scene from one trailer is in the climax of the movie. You have not seen anything. Even if you watch the trailers, you go, oh, it spoiled the movie. Nope. You ain't seen nothing yet. Did I just quote the jazz singer? Whatever. A great, a great conclusion, a great finale, one of the best, with some of the greatest twists and turns. As far as Batman goes, you cannot end the, the comic books. The comic books have no end, but movies have to have a conclusion. And this concludes, and the only, the only way I think you can end Batman and not tick people off. That's as far as I'm going to go with as far as spoilers. So, yeah, a must-own. You, if you don't already own the first two in the Dark Knight Trilogy, get them now, and then get this one. You will not, you will not regret it. You have my word on that.
It's a must own. You have to see this. I really do hope that this movie gets a lot more attention, that it makes a lot of money. I, I'm not sure if it'll make Avengers money, but I would love to see it. Batman is my favorite, is my favorite superhero, and I want to see him, I want to see him do great. I'm just hoping that certain circumstances don't hurt its chances. Of course, I'd already, I'd love to see this on, like, a Best Picture nomination, but it's Christopher Nolan, let's face it, he's gonna get the shaft again. But it's not actually as if the Academy Awards are all about skill or talent, as opposed to just being one gigantic circle jerk. But that's a rant for another time. I hope you guys like this episode of Cinema and Review. And guess what next week is? Finishing up. Oh, sorry. Forgot. Not finishing up. Have to see Eclipse. And then, and then, after Eclipse, Breaking Dawn, Part 1. Oh, joy! Well, I'm Joseph Marks. This has been Cinema and Review. And I'll see you guys next time. Oh, what fun.